begin with a top story. U.S. President Joe Biden has addressed the nation from the Oval Office, offering the public their first chance to directly hear his rationale behind dropping out. Now, this was Biden's first address since he announced his decision to withdraw from the presidential race. Biden outlined what pushed him to his decision after weeks of withstanding persistent pressure, saying he had to unite his party if democracy was to be defended. I revere this office, but I love my country more. It's been the honor of my life to serve as your president. But in the defense of democracy, which is at stake, I think it's more important than any title. Biden stuck to his belief that his vision for the country merited a second term. But his speech reflected his awareness of the voices calling on him to stand down. The president acknowledged that there is a time and place for long years of experience and a time and place for new voices. I believe my record as president, my leadership in the world, my vision for America's future all merited a second term. But nothing, nothing can come in the way of saving our democracy. That includes personal ambition. So I've decided the best way forward is to pass the torch to a new generation. It's the best way to unite our nation. Biden asserted that for the rest of his term, he'd be focused on doing his job as president. He ticked off a list of his administration's policy initiatives, knowing that this would be his chance to shape how history views his one and only term in office. Over the next six months, I'll be focused on doing my job as president. That means I'll continue to lower costs for hardworking families, grow our economy, I'll keep defending our personal freedoms and our civil rights, from the right to vote to the right to choose. I'll keep calling out hate and extremism. Biden once again endorsed his vice president Kamala Harris to become the Democratic Party's presidential nominee. I'd like to thank our great vice president Kamala Harris. She's experienced, she's tough, she's capable. She's been an incredible partner to me and a leader for our country. Passing on the torch, Biden expressed his love and gratitude for the belief that Americans have shown in him. And with an eye on the presidential race, he backed the Democratic Party's bid, saying America is at an inflection point and has to choose between hope and hate, between unity and division. We have to decide, do we still believe in honesty, decency, respect, freedom, justice, and democracy. In this moment, we can see those we disagree with, not as enemies, or, but as, friend, as fellow Americans. Can we do that? As Biden addressed the nation, dozens of people gathered in support in Lafayette Square in front of the White House. Supporters held signs and chanted, thank you, Joe, saying they are grateful for the president and his service to the country. And now we're being joined by Joanna LeBlanc. Ms. Blanc, she has served as Legislative Director at the United States Congress. She was the liaison to the White House, Department of State, and Financial Institutions. Now also joining us is our correspondent, Susan Tehedani. Thank you so much for joining us. And Susan, you know, let me come to you first. Uh, we did talk about his speech and, uh, you know, it wasn't really political. It was more of like emotional, but he still tried and focused and put in, uh, you know, some political elements. Do you think he missed the chance of going more political or how did you think of the speech? President Biden seemed to have wanted to achieve three goals. One, to tell the nation that he's still the president to talk about his achievements or what he perceives to be his achievements. And number three, to endorse Kamala Harris. This speech was really hyped up for us 
to try to understand why does he decided to leave the race. Was it his health? Was it the low poll numbers? Or was it something else? Yes, he did say he wants to leave and pass the torch to save democracy. But there are still questions that are remaining because of the manner that he decided to exit this race so abruptly when he was so adamant, not only him, but his family and his top aides, that he would continue not only in the race as president, but also able to serve another four years. Uh, Susan, stay with us. I'd just like to now come to uh, Ms. LeBlanc. Uh, Johanna, you know, we've had waiting views which have come in at the moment. Some said that this was Mr. Biden's commitment to democracy, and some see it as a bit too late in the race to be passing on the torch to the new generation, especially when he didn't want to do it even till a week ago. How do you see it? Well, I think it is fair to say that um, um, while we want to believe Mr. Biden, this is about saving democracy. And I think that uh, President Biden cares about America's democracy and cares about America's future. Uh, but I think ultimately this is about the reality that after the disastrous um, debate between he and Mr. Trump, uh, many of the donors um, were calling for, for him to step down. Um, and I think um, Mr. Biden had absolutely no choice and he had to ultimately ultimately make that decision. But beyond that, when we look at the polls, the polls poll numbers were not in his favor. Um, it shows that he was going to lose. He was more likely um, to choose um, to lose um, against against Mr. Trump. And in addition to that, the uh, the attempted assassination against uh, Mr. Trump's life um, uh, increased um, uh, Mr. Trump's um, support around the country and, and, and further mobilize his base. So I think ultimately, uh, President Biden, while he does care about democracy, he does care about th this nation. I think it was it was a situation where he was forced to step down in, in, an, in an effort for the Democrats um, to maintain the White House in November. Ms. LeBlanc, I just want to come to you again. Uh, you know, do you feel when he says that he wants to pass the torch further, we're about 105 days away from D-Day. Is it a bit too little too late? Obviously, uh, the election is about 100, 100 days from now. Uh, but the good thing is that um, the, the, the vice president, you know, is, is currently the vice president. Um, so she does have NIM recognition um, and, and, and also um, uh, more than 50 uh, party leaders have endorsed um, the, the vice president. And she has um, been able to secure all of the delegates that are required um, in order for her to secure the, the nomination during the convention which is scheduled to take place next month. Um, so I think while it is kind of late in the game, but nonetheless, I think from day one, um, since the announcement, um, I think Vice President Harris has been able to rally uh, the Democratic Party, rally the, the base. And, and she even was able to um, to raise more than $200 million in, 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 about, in, a, in about 42 hours. And, and that is um, unprecedented and, and very, very significant. But I think ultimately what's going to need to happen is that the Democrats are going to have to knock on every single door. Um, they cannot um, take anything for granted or any voter for granted. Um, it's going to take a lot of work. But also what I think is important is that um, who Vice President Harris is going to select as her vice president um, in, in the event that she were to secure the nomination. I think that's a really important point because for now we have four candidates, four names which we can think about, which. Uh, um, she would choose now. Now that he mentioned Kamala Harris and and um, and you talked about it, and Biden has sort of given the torch to her. Let's talk about the campaigns now. We know Trump is campaigning. He just uh, concluded his campaign in Carolina, North Carolina, and she was in Indianapolis where she was addressing sisters, as she called them. Um, when you talk about the topics which Biden took up. He took up abortion. He knew that, well, age is now not a factor. That is something which he can pick up now to go against Kamala Harris. Harris, on the other hand, now he has a strong point. He has immigration to talk about. On the other hand, Kamala Harris, she's, uh, you know, she, she also has been talking about abortion. How do you think the campaign now goes forward now that Trump has now picked up abortion to attack Kamala Harris? Yeah, I think that the Democratic Party needs to understand that women in this country, yes, they care about abortion, but they also do care about um, uh, uh, the border issue. They also care about jobs. Um, they also care about a host of other issues. Uh, so, so Vice President Harris 
cannot focus merely on reproductive rights and think that is going to win her, her the election. Um, she has to focus on other issues that the American people care about. You know, things like, you know, the student debt crisis here in this country uh, and being able to, for someone to fill up their gas tank and be able to take a vacation at the end of, of the year. Um, all of those things are pertinent to the American people and have to be addressed adequately. But what I think of the administration failed on was uh, they, you know, initially they gave uh, Vice President Harris uh, the portfolio to handle the border crisis, which is a complete mess because the border crisis is an issue that cannot be resolved during one administration because part of the problem is not just some of our domestic laws, but also some of the foreign policies that have uh, led to the underdevelopment of many countries around the world that the U.S. is supposed to be friends to. And also the issue of climate change have led to the increase of, migra of migration, folks taking dangerous routes to come to the shores of America, hoping to be able to pursue the, the American dream. And unfortunately, um, that portfolio has not been addressed properly. And I think Mr. Trump is going to leverage on that and he's going to attack um, the, the, the Democrats on that particular issue. And many Americans are very concerned about about this, this issue. And another thing I think Mr. Trump was very savvy in doing is that I think one of the reasons why he selected um, um, Vance, J.D. Vance, as his running mate is because um, she ha he has an Indian um, a, a, a wife. And as you know, Vice President Harris is of East Indian descent. So, so I think that he's looking to split the vote uh, from that region who are based here in America, which I think was very smart on, on his end. You made right. some pertinent points there, Ms. LeBlanc. That was Johanna LeBlanc, of course, uh, and uh, Susan Terani. Susan, I'll, uh, we'd have to move further from here. We're a little short on time. We'll connect with you a little later in the day again. And uh, Ms. LeBlanc, thank you so much for joining us and sharing all your insights.